Magnus Carlsen is so good at positional chess and peace maneuvering that he is often dubbed a supercharged Karpov, a Karpov 2.0. The legendary Garry Kasparov directly called him a deadly hybrid of Fischer and Karpov, that is, by maximizing the effect of his pieces with minimal resources and doing it over and over and over again for 50, 60, 70 moves, like squeezing water from stone. Today is a bit different. We see the tactical side of 12-year-old Magnus. Hopefully you guys can get something out of this. Let's boost our ELOs. Let's get it. So this event took place during the World Chess Championship under 14 in Chalkidiki, Greece. John Ludwig Hammer holds the white pieces and Magnus plays with the black pieces. You guys will notice that uh, Grandmaster Hammer now was 2074 rated then and Magnus is rated 2450. Um, yeah, massive difference, difference, I can speak English, I swear, in strength. Anyways, before I begin, before I forget, if you do like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. You have my gratitude. Let's get started. White starts with knight to f3, the ready. d6 by Magnus, d4, taking over the central squares, knight to f6, taking over the light squares. Knight B to D2, G6, Fianchetto, here is E4, Bishop to G7, Bishop to D3, readying development here. Castle King, Castle King, and you'll notice uh, Carlsen just castles quickly instead of pushes, say, C5, and I notice a lot of people in chess.com who are maybe sub 1700s, what they do is Try to find complications or great tactics in the middle when you should just castle. And that's the first point I want to point out. It's so simple. Both of these players clearly demonstrated, and that is, well, develop early and king safety. Boom. Magnus continues with knight to c6. Baiting the idea here, uh, of course, of d5. The opponent plays c3. Now what happens with knight to d5 is it fixes the structure in the middle. Knight to b4, say trying to eliminate the bishop and open up the position so black will have two bishops. Say after that retreat, a4, ideas of reshuffle, having the knight here, you can't boot it out. It hits the center more, so after say that, takes and black is up very slightly in the middle game by having two bishops. Negligible, but a nice strategic idea in the game that didn't happen instead just simply c3 um, preventing any ideas here and now e5 Mag magnus hits the center a little bit scared at least in this position because uh, magnus is 2450 i'd be scared too if i was just 2074 h3 prophylaxis and here magnus tries to, tries to poke the position knight to h5 of course, uh, thinking and ideally being able to place that knight there, great. And here, uh, Ludwig Hammer plays d takes e5. d takes e5 breaks the general rule of maintaining what? Central tension. In this position, Magnus threatening to go knight 2, f4. So instead, just simply play knight to b3 slicing through the diagonal and say after a4 trying to boot that out i'm sorry a5 a4 the position is maximally tense unclear black can't put the knight here without getting it captured so all is well maximum tension instead uh ludwig hammer takes d takes on e5 and here you can kind of see already that magnus wants to see how tactically astute his opponent is uh, I think we would all play that too if we could see it. It's just a simple knight to f4. Intermezzo attack. Intermezzo. And that would be the third point. Create and look for intermezzos. An intermezzo is an initiative creating move. It's an unexpected move that poses a severe threat and forces an immediate response. That's according to chess.com. And the immediate response here is that if you don't do anything, same move here, you lose the bishop. So then white plays bishop to b5, tries to create a counter threat by say this pawn has not been captured, 
And now I'm going to try to double your central, uh, at least the, the C file here, but that's not really, really a big threat. Um, because then Magnus just plays knight takes on e5. And what white could have done here is simply play a bishop to z4, which leads me to uh, a fourth idea here that we could learn from our opponent. Now I'll talk about strategic keys placement, I can speak English, much more uh, in the later variations, because Magnus is so good at evoking kind of uh, reactive... Um, moves by the opponent that worsens their position. And here, this was just a better move than what uh, Ludwig played, playing this, trying to threaten that. And here, Magnus just takes here, knight takes on e5. This is what happened in the game, by the way. And Ludwig takes, or white takes, uh, knight takes on e5. And Magnus, because now the knight is here on the fourth rank, in front of the king, just simply plays queen to g5 idea of checkmate immediately um, and also note that these pieces are, are in the same uh, rank basically and the best defense is not to push the pawn but just play here and you simply take Magnus did that mind you though if we went back into position and had white played just a better a better better move that way thinking about just pinning f7 light square control, a diagonal, then after, say, knight takes, if Magnus would not play this, bishop to g5, he would not play that, of course, um, bishop to g4, uh, basically white is up a piece. If you try to boot it out, simply you have to retreat. If this is on praise, your queen's on praise, and after this move, yeah, you're going to be down many a pieces. And one simple move created that, but uh, alas, it's too late. Knight takes on e5, takes. Now, white needs to solve that problem. Magnus poses a checkmate threat. Knight to g4. And here's simply queen takes on b5. Now, with some control of uh, the light square diagonal, knight is still nagging the king side there on f4. And here, Knight to b3 was played. Now, basically, white is thinking development. Try to block this. Develop the bishop right there. But Magnus is one, one crafty chess player, and we shall see. He starts with knight to e2 first, controlling these two squares. King sidesteps to h1. And now he takes bishop. Bishop takes on g4. Gives up the bishop, but as you can see, this is open. This... Uh, file is open, this has been doubled, and now there's a nagging knight in the white camp. So after takes, rook to rook a to e8, threatening the pawn here. You can't defend this way because not only does it weaken the squares, you simply, simply lose exchange, which is very sad. And it gets tricky, very tricky, because it's not so easy to get rid of that knight, mind you, and by the way, Say if you play g3, then you give up this. This being the central pawn. And after king moves to g2, yeah, you're going to lose the other pawn. So that's a simplistic way of looking at it. But here, um, after the threat of pawn takes on e4, white plays uh, bishop to e3. And it looks good, I guess. Good because it looks like Magnus uh, just loses a piece here. This is given up, all the exit squares for the knights taken over, but it's not so simple. Because after rook takes on e4, and now white thinks you can just grab that, Magnus sacrifices the queen! The queen! I have to say it like that. Gotham chess style. Notice how the exit squares are covered up and... This, as in the H, file is open. So after takes, that, my friend, is a beautiful checkmate. Anastasia's checkmate, I think, if I recall correctly. Um, and at this point, actually, John Ludwig Hammer resigned. Which leads me to another point. Uh, 
in improving your chess and going and looking at John Ludwig's hammer's mistake, if we go back to before bishop to e3 was played, one of the primary things you should do, um, at least thinking about king save because this thing is there and you have to get rid of it, is try to get rid of its defender. A, sorry, a4 would have been a nice line to keep uh, to keep white in, in the game. And after that, black needs to uh, protect the, the knight there. After that, bishop to c3 now closing in and, and you'll notice the differences the the dark queen is no longer in the, the fifth rank so after takes you have to you can't take this anywhere uh, so you take here and it's at anybody's game at this point it's actually pretty even according to the silicon monster king of g1 uh, no more checkmate threats of course, of course, the position is a little shattered on the king side, and uh, maybe Magnus would eke out a win here. But that's how you survive, at least. King safety is paramount. Um, I watch, not often, people that play on their 1400 levels, and they ignore their king um, and other tactics. So, yeah. Force, force tactics and king safety. Gotta look into that. Anyways, quick recap. Knight to f3, d6, d4, knight to f6, g6, fianchetto, pushes in the middle, both sides agree and adhere to the rule of um, really quick development in king safety, c uh, knight to c6, c3, maintaining tension, e5, prophylaxis, I guess, but here knight to h5, and then first. White is first to break the tension. Not very good. Intermezzo. Look for initiative creating moves. You don't gotta capture that. Um, then as white, this move was not very strong. Bishop 2. Uh, C4 was good enough. and in, in fact, much better. After takes. Initiative. Intermezzo again. Now hitting here. After blocks, simply takes. Like the uh, light square diagonal weakness. Knight to b3. Check. Now takes, doubling the pawn. Hitting the central square, central pawn. First, but first, get rid of the defender. Be wary of your king's safety. I'm drawing a lot of squares and circles. In here. After trying to eye and being lured by a free piece, Magnus sacrifices the queen. So force tactics. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that. More games to come. I'll see you guys later. Double peace.